Feliz Navidad! Today I'm going to make, or attempt to, at least, Coquito. So if you will please forgive this humble gringo a transgression, I'm going to raid your abuelito's recipe book to make Coquito. Coquito. And also, we're going to try it with a bunch of different rums and pick our favorite. I know a lot of these aren't from Puerto Rico. We'll get to that in a bit. This was shot near the end of the episode. You're going back in time now! <laughs> I won't lie, I hadn't actually heard of this until so many of you requested I do an episode on it. Uh, but why would I have? I, I regret to say that I've never even been to Puerto Rico, and my grandmas, and my limited understanding here is that Coquito recipes are jealously guarded by grandmas, would have been much more likely to have a secret recipe for boiled cabbage or a strong martini or moonshine. So I started looking into Coquito as only a gringo can, by googling and tweeting. And this is what I found out. Coquito is frequently called Puerto Rican eggnog. Uh, and I get why people call it that. It's drank at the holidays, it's a sweet and creamy dessert-style drink, it's boozy, uh, and you've got to introduce it to people somehow, and, well, Puerto Rican eggnog is a handy shorthand. But it is also not eggnog. Eggnog has roots that go way back to the 1300s in ale-based possets and flip, and a lot of people think that Coquito has those same roots. Uh, Spanish colonists brought a love of possets with them when they came to the Caribbean, and over time enter rum, and coconut, and boom, we've got coquito, which, by the way, means little coconut. It's pretty impossible to definitively draw a direct link between possets and coquito. And it gets a bit more suspicious when we consider that the first recipe in print I can find is in Cocina Gusto, a cookbook that was printed in 1952, and that recipe does not involve eggs. The not possets tradition holds that coquito was invented sometime in the first half of the 20th century, and who knows, maybe by somebody who was in fact looking at eggnog, thinking about doing their own riff on it, or maybe not. Beyond this book by Berta Cabanillas, it's impossible, really, for me to say anything definitive and specific about the history of Coquito, unless it was, in fact, invented by Berta, but I, I don't think it was. So let's dive in and make a batch of Coquito right after this. You know, some of my favorite things eat are buffalo wings, donuts, hot pockets, pickles, tacos, you know, good stuff. That's why I was uh, caught pretty off guard when my doctor told me I was deficient in vitamins D and, and B12. I guess it just goes to show that even the healthiest diets can have some gaps in its vitamin intake. So I, I started looking around for a multivitamin to get into, and I stumbled into Ritual. The more I looked into Ritual, the more I liked. There was no fillers or colorants, it's just the bits and bobs it needs to do its job. It's a solid mix of the 10 vitamins most likely to be missing from your diet, cover my situation and then some. It's vegan friendly, I'm not yet, but I like to future-proof my lifestyle. It's sugar-free, that's never a bad thing, and it's free of allergens. I don't think I'm allergic to anything, but you can never be too sure. One of my favorite things about them is that they will ship straight to you for a dollar a day, which makes it very easy to stay on top of things. You're never gonna run out. They say better health doesn't happen overnight, and so right now, Ritual, in addition to sponsoring this episode, thank you, Ritual, is offering all of you 10% off your first three months. Just use the link below and that code at checkout. All right, feeling pretty refreshed. Let's get back to the show. And I'm back with everything I need to make Coquito. So let's make some Coquito. So in my research, I've uncovered quite a few recipes for this one. Uh, quite a few approaches, and it would be kind of impossible and senseless for me to try to make them all. So I pick one, okay? I'm going to pick one base recipe that we're going to pair with a bunch of different rums and see which one is the best way to go with. Uh, my instinct, of course, in that kind of a situation is to go with the most basic, earliest incarnation of the recipe, and though I know that the recipe first appears in print in Berta Cabanillas' book, Cabanillas' book, I don't actually have a copy handy, and I also don't think that there's an English translation anyway, so it kind of leaves me in a pickle. However, uh, bartender Giuseppe Gonzalez has a recipe that he says is absolutely 1950s style, straightforward coquito, and that's the version I'm going to go with today. Uh, though it is typically served cold, the recipe is prepared in heat over a saucepan, so let's get cooking. I've got my pan and my cooktop ready, and into it I want to add a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. And I pause here just to mention that evaporated milk and condensed milk are not the same thing. They're not. Okay, so you want evaporated milk. This is condensed. See, it's a tiny can of evaporated milk. Okay, one. 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. The other thing about evaporated milk is that technically you can make your own. Uh, you would make your own by taking whole milk, putting it into a saucepan and simmering it low for a really long time so that you can get rid of, you get it down to 40% of its original volume. So if you pour it into the salt, you know, however you want to arrange that, right? Um, you might be careful not to burn it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But 
I mean, if you look at the ingredients in this can of evaporated milk, I don't know what benefit you get by making your own, because that's all this is, is evaporated milk. And now I need a 15 ounce can of cream of coconut like Coco Lopez. And I also want to briefly pause here to say that you can make your own cream of coconut using nothing more than some whole fat coconut milk, like a canned coconut milk with some sugar and salt. I use Steve the bartender's recipe and I make my own all the time. Uh, why am I not making my own here? Two reasons. The first is that um, I get the impression that there are a lot of uh, Coco Lopez uh, adherents out there and I don't want to gain their ire in going off book, right? The other reason is that when I went to my grocery store, uh, they only had low fat coconut milk and I did make a batch of my own cream of coconut last night or the other night uh, when I was working on this recipe. And uh, that low fat coconut milk makes a bad cream of coconut. So don't make my mistake. <laughs> don't try to make your own with the low fat stuff. It just stinks. And it does have a pull top, but I'm doing something here, right? If I pull that, that's gonna leave a sharp edge on the inside. And I know this is gonna be thick in there and I'm gonna wanna scoop it out with one of these guys and that that sharp edge will cut my rubber. So what I'm gonna do is, and I'm not even gonna do it straight down, I'm gonna open it sideways. Hopefully this will work on this can. It's not working. I did something very wrong. I'm just destroying this can, guys. I'm just mangling. <laughs> I made it worse. I made it much worse. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. There we go, clean cut top. <laughs> Woo! But so now I don't. I shouldn't have as much of a sharp edge uh, around the lip, which will make this a lot easier to get into my can. Uh, first, we'll just start by trying to pour it in. See if that'll work. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, that's what happens. It kind of partially coagulates, leaves a plug. And then the rest of this, I'm gonna just kind of reach in here and scoop out. Good stuff, that. That really just has to do with the kind of fat it is and where its melt point is, which is hovers right around room temperature, just above room temperature. Oh, and there are recipes, by the way, that will call for um, condensed milk oh, with evaporated milk. This is not one of those recipes. That seems to be a later addition, similar to eggs, which seems to get in a little bit later. Here is where it gets tricky and fun though, this recipe, because the recipe calls for baking spices to preference, basically. And I've seen recipes that call for um, all kinds of things here, you know, including lemon and ginger and the like. Um, and I actually did a batch, uh, my first, first test batch of this, I used some off the shelf mulling spice that came in a jar and I didn't like it. And you know why? I think it was too much clove and I think that there was too much orange, like bitter orange peels. Um, so I'm careful about this. I would say I'm staying away from ginger, lemon, citrus, although I could see limited amounts of those being very nice in here. And I'm gonna be very careful about how much clove I put in. I think that it's easy to, easy to overdo with the cloves. What I do think is good, some cinnamon sticks. I'm gonna go with four of about this size. Uh, some people say, hey, break them up if you can, because it helps them release. I don't know if that matters or not, but sure, I'll break them if, they, if they're willing to break, I'll break them, whatever. Here we go, four cinnamon sticks. And then cloves. Uh, cloves I find easy to be, to overdo. I think two, I mean, three cloves will be enough. And then maybe one or two, star anise I actually like a lot. I'm gonna throw in two. I just happen to like that flavor. You might wanna do one. Um, I always like to put it in like some hot cider. And by cider, I mean apple juice. <laughs> to people in the UK, take an unfiltered apple juice, what we in America call cider. Uh, I warm that up a little bit with some lemon peel and um, star anise and maybe a little honey or something like that. Woo, I like that. Um, I do like some vanilla extract. I'm gonna use a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon was too little. Um, and more than a teaspoon sounds crazy to me. <laughs> so a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I actually have whole bean vanilla. And again, I did use some of that in my first batch. Um, I actually, I think that whole bean vanilla, I love the idea of using that. I find it really hard to get a good flavor infusion in a recipe with whole bean vanilla. Um, I have to learn more about working with that. I think it probably just, it's one of those things where it just takes time. I know people make like vanilla sugar and stuff like that by just leaving a bean and some sugar kind of indefinitely. So I don't know, I think go with the extract here. If you want to do like a combination of extract and some whole beans so you have a little flex in there, that's nice. Um, and then some fresh grated nutmeg. Uh, nutmeg I, I like, I, I, don't, I don't know. You know how much, how, how much uh, nutmeg do you use? How many angels dance on the head of a pin? Is that uh, app appropriate use of that phrase? I don't think so. Um, just grate some nutmeg in there until you feel like you've got enough. Uh, I like nutmeg a lot, nutmeg is, it's important stuff. Uh, right now the comments are saying Townsend's has entered the chat. I hope so. Uh, now I'm gonna bring the whole thing to a simmer and stir pretty much the whole time. I don't want it to burn. I don't want, I certainly don't want to boil over. Uh, we wanna make sure 
um, to keep this not burnt, uh, to be honest. There we go. Away she goes. Um, I got my whisk. Uh, and there's really no magic to what we're cooking here, right? Like th this is just heating up to help those flavors extract from the cinnamon sticks, from the clove, from the star anise. Um, you know, there's nothing to cook here. Uh, so there, there's a danger that you would burn the milk or something like that. You don't want to do that. That can be pretty gross. All we want to do is get it simmering and keep it there for maybe 10 minutes. Some of these recipes I've seen call for a blender. I haven't tested one of those. Uh, this works great. I would imagine that if you were doing it in a blender uh, and you're working with whole spices, you would need more filtration. I kind of love the fact that all I'm going to need to filter this is a uh, fine mesh strainer. Uh, having to push it through like a nut milk bag or something like that is just like a mess that I don't want to deal with. I think that this is actually the simpler solution here. And this is done. It smells really good. All we got to do now is bottle it. Pretty simple to do with my nice new funnel. It's been on the show a couple times now. I'm still proud of that funnel. That helps. There we go. Just make sure we try to get every drop of that good coquito. Okay, and this is our coquito. Now that it's cooled off, we should bottle it, uh, which we did, and add in rum. Giuseppe calls for 10 ounces of Don Q gold rum, and that does sound very good to me. Most recipes you're going to find are either going to call for Don Q or Bacardi. It's a Puerto Rican thing, so keeping it local makes a lot of sense. I've had some suggestions, though, from Twitter saying that it's better with a funkier pot still Jamaican style rum or whatever. And if you've been watching the channel for a minute, you know that that sounds like it's right up my alley. So what do I do? Well, if you're looking for a straightforward approach here, bottle this up, uh, add 10 ounces of Don Q gold and stick it in the fridge and it's sipping time. I'm actually going to keep the rum out of mine though for now. Um, and in fact, I don't think there's any special reason that you need to add rum to it when you bottle it at all. I think this would stay in the fridge like this and you could add rum to it um, as needed or you could enjoy it as a non-alcoholic treat. Though I think that you'd want to thin it out by the ratio. Thin it out with water or milk uh, in place of the rum. So there's 25 ounces of Coquito mix here uh, and they expect me to add 10 ounces of rum. That gives us a cocktail ratio of two and a half parts of our Coquito mix to one part of spirit. And that's what I'm going to use going forward. We're going to experiment now, pairing this mix with various rums to pick my own personal favorite. And by the way, chilled, this will last in the fridge for a good long while, possibly indefinitely if your glassware was good and sanitized. So I've got these rums and I want to sample in addition to the Don Q Gold baseline. So what I'm going to do is set up a bunch of glassware here. And I'm going to add two and a half ounces of chilled Coquito to each of these uh, glasses now, right? And I'll put this back in my fridge, which isn't down there. I'm just acting like it is. And now I want to add one ounce of my rum to each of these. So um, you don't have to garnish it this way, but what the heck, we'll throw a little nutmeg on each of these. A lot of times I see people garnishing them with um, a rim of coconut flake and stuff like that. That seems like a great idea too. I think a little nutmeg on top is a welcome addition. Unnecessary, but as long as they're all the same, right? As long as we treat all of these the same way. Oh, that one got away from me. As long as we treat all these guys with the same kind of ingredients, then it's a, it's a good study. It's a good little test. 10 different Coquitos. All the same Coquito recipe, 10 different rums. Let's see how they go. This is the Don Q Gold uh, per Giuseppe Gonzalez. Boy, is that delicious. That is so good. What is the flavor of that, man? I don't know. I'm having a hard time placing that. It is, because it's not, I don't get a lot of coconut, to be honest. Um, it's not super coconutty. It's like spicy, it's spiced coconutty. It's like coconut and baking spices. It definitely tastes Christmassy. The, the rum is, brings some fire in a very pleasant way. It's vanilla, it's sweet, it's thick, it's creamy. I get it. I get why you would call this Puerto Rican eggnog. This is with the silver. I'm not expecting a huge difference here. It's a little less full body. This brings a little less baking spice flavor. I wouldn't expect that to make that big of a difference, but it did. All right, the Bacardi. Honestly, I don't taste the rum on that at all. This could be my palate changing. A little bit more, like there's a stronger nose. It's more, it hits my sinuses a little bit harder, but I don't really taste it. Same thing. I wonder if that's actually the nutmeg though. Let's go back. We're gonna get sauced. Okay, of the first four, I think the Don Q Gold is the best. The difference is really subtle. All of these are very good. All of these are very good. And unless you had them lined up side by side like this, you would not be able to make that determination. To me, it just brings the most 
cinnamon and spice, like the clove is just right. I don't know, it's just better balanced. It's a very subtle difference though. I'm curious what the, how this was, is gonna be though, the black. Ooh, interesting. This one has a very pleasant finish. There's a tick in the middle there that has, I think it's sort of tannins. I don't know if they're real tannins or artificial or something like that, but it's like almost like it's over oaked. It's a little bitter in the center of the flavor profile. But I like where it goes. The ending, the finishing end is very toasty in a very pleasant way. It's interesting because you might not like the bitterness, right? But it does present itself as the only real. These are all, in my opinion, not as good as this uh, for it. And they're trying to do the same thing. This is a departure in that it becomes sort of a different drink. Um, okay. Our first Jamaican, this is our Jamaican entry for this. You know, I thought about doing several Jamaican rums, um, Ray and Ting maybe. I mean, I kept away from Overproof. I didn't put in Lemonheart 151 or, over, or Ray and Ting, so Ray and Ting. Uh, Ray and Nephew, <laughs> totally different nose. Much stronger. Um, that Jamaican rum is immediately a uh, departure. Shit, I love that. Ooh, that is cool. That's. <laughs> I like that a lot. So I love that uh, Jamaican funk. That is an awesome combo. <laughs> I apologize to the people of Puerto Rico. I think my personal preference is this uh, so far. Uh, this is a personal taste thing. This is a personal taste. Uh, it comes in, hold on a second, like tart, sharp, biting funk that just grabs the sides of your tongue. And then that resolves into this caramel, but like caramel is like beyond, like burnt caramel. And then that turns into sort of a, a quieting uh, Jamaican style rum funk, that rotting bananas that sort of like fades out. <sighs> Man, I like that. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. I like that a lot. Uh, my personal favorite so far is this. And then of the Puerto Rican ones, I think I go with the Don Q. They're different drinks. They're, I mean, they, they really are different drinks. Okay, so El Dorado. It's eight year old um, Demerara from Guyana. Woo! That might've been the nutmeg, hold on a second. <laughs> Wow, that is a wildly different character. I think this is a bad use for this rum. It definitely has a kind of, and this is nothing against El Dorado, it's just the way the flavors combine with the nutmeg. I think it's the, the union of this rum plus nutmeg is maybe not so great. It kind of comes across a little um, paint thinnery, a little tape turpentine. <laughs> if I didn't have these other ones to compare it to, I think I would still like it because you still have a lot of those other flavor components there, but you know, when you're really looking at the fine tuning, which one is the one? I think this is the wrong rum for this use case. Uh, I have a funny feeling this one will probably be just like this, honestly. I think that when you mute the flavors of these, but we'll find out. I think the barbon cord is gonna be pretty similar to the Apple in the state. Now that these are very similar rums um, on their own, but I think that in the presence of this mix, this drink, those two are gonna come out pretty similar. They don't, it's really subtle actually. It's surprisingly subtle. That's good. I would say that this is actually most like the black, the, um, Havana, uh, sorry, <laughs> I've had a few of these now. I think that this winds up being most similar to the Bacardi black, but not the same, not the same. This is a much, I think this is better, honestly. I like this more than the, the black, uh, but it's similar. It has, it's not real funky at all, actually, which is funny because the barbon court can be pretty funky. Although I was, I was out of Haitian white. That's what I was really looking for for this, but that's okay. This is the eight years, the more refined barman court. So now we're on to the weird odd ducks, the spiced rums. Undisputed father of the old school tattoo, Mormon sailor Jerry Collins built his rep, whatever. 92 proof, bold and smooth as hell. <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about how this rum is made, right? Because it doesn't tell me what, what country is it from. Edison, New Jersey, that's where it's from. No, that's where it's bottled, which is crazy blended with the finest rums from the Caribbean and our unmatched recipe of natural spices. Okay, so it's just a blend of Caribbean rums and spices and Kraken, 94 proof, the Kraken, great bottle, the little handles on the side, clever design. I actually like that, I love having that because I'm good at dropping things, so a hook is good for me. Rum company, producer, shipper, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Oh, doesn't tell you anything about the rum that's in there. Uh, but I will say that the smell of this is very vanilla. I mean like heavy vanilla. So this, I mean, just on the nose, you get a different odor than you do with the Sailor Jerry. Okay, here we go, Sailor Jerry. It smells great, I don't like that very much. It leads with a stringentness. And then there's a very artificial, I mean, I, I hate to say this, but there is like a really chemical turn in there that I'm not in love with, to be honest. This is probably not a good use for the Sailor Jerry. Yeah, 
you know what it is? It becomes too clovey, too heavy on clove in this. All of a sudden it goes over the top. I, I, I think that that's, for me, cloves are easy to overdo. And I think that there's probably some clove in that or something, or maybe a bunch of allspice. And it just, it overdoes it. Um, let's try the Kraken now. <laughs> this is not good. It's one note all the time. And it's just clove and fake vanilla. Oh man, there it is. <laughs> oh. That, that vanilla-ish flavor, that vanilla sweetened hookah tobacco flavor. Ah, that comes back from the grave. Um, not a fan of either of these. I was just a bummer too, because I thought that they would be very interesting entrants in the list. I thought that they would actually have a use here. I thought they'd be great here. I'm personally opposed to it because in this case, it in both cases, they end up simplifying the evolution and flavor profile down to a single note. Uh, pretty much. I mean, this one is just like clove, I think. I think that's what that is. Um, and then this one, it's it's kind of like highway tar again that resolves a little bit into a very kind of noxious vanilla flavor. I'm not going to ever work with them as a sponsor, it turns out. It just, I don't think it's going to work out well for me. <laughs> I don't think that they're going to like my show. Um, of these, my favorites are the Don Q. Gold, if we're going Puerto Rico. I'm fascinated by the way this turned out. Yeah, um, this was really cool. I think that the Jamaican turn was very, very interesting here. I can't say that every Jamaican rum is gonna work that well, but the, um, which one is this? The Reserve Blend. The Appleton Estate Reserve Blend. Uh, whew, I like it a lot, uh, but that's me. I like it a lot. I don't know if you will. Yeah, I would go with one of these two. I would, <laughs> I'd go with either the Don Q or the reserve. I mean, honestly, all of these are fine. Uh, this one is just slightly more caramelly than these other three. Or this one is a bit of an odd duck. It's sort of a less good, aw less awesome version of the Rum Barbancourt 8. Um, however, this is like, what is this? Is this a liter or two liters? This is huge. This is a 175. This is a, a seven, 175 liter that probably costs as much as the Barbancourt 8. So uh, you're going to get a lot more juice out of it but will you have other uses for it? I don't know, because um, you might not like it that much. Uh, the El Dorado, I think, was a not well-placed here. Barbara Court was cool, um, but all of both of these were kind of less cool, in my opinion, than this. The funk here was really interesting and fun to explore, whereas in this case, it was like, okay, cool, like it's road tar kind of thing. Um, sort of, and, and less evolution going on, and more kind of one note. Uh, but with the Jamaican, I thought a lot really kind of came to the fore. Uh, these guys are bad. I don't like them. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. That's my Coquito recommendations. I say Don Q or Appleton Reserve, man. Holy hell, that's a good shit. That's a good shit. Anyway, there's so many versions of this recipe out there. Lots and lots of them get very, very complicated. Uh, generally, when I find that to be the case in my research, I like to look for the stripped down earliest version of the recipe, and, and that's what I did here. I kind of went back to that 50s style. I had also given thought originally uh, on figuring out how to make a single serving of this, like in a shaker, since you're probably, hopefully, not having a big family gathering this year, given our present COVID conditions. But at the end of the day, I couldn't figure out a way to do that without having to simply make a big bottle of Coquito mix and to, that you would combine with rum in the shaker, and ultimately that's what we did here. I couldn't get around it. You have to make the bottle. So yeah, I mean, it didn't make any sense to do that. That was my initial plan. I was going to do, you know, a big patch and then be like, and here's how you make a single serving or something like that. But I was like, oh, you can't. There's no way to do it. So the more inter the other thing to do was to just to try it with all these different rums. So that's what we got. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been my attempt at making Coquito. I hope I did your abuelito proud. Um, abuelito, abuelito, or abuelita, abuelita. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Greg. Uh, this is How to Drink. Uh, I thank you for permitting me to uh, read Abuelita's recipe book. Um, I'm on Twitter at How to Drink. I'm on Instagram at How to Drink. Both those have numbers in the middle. I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD, and we do all kinds of fun things on there. I am live here in the bar a lot. 
Uh, there's behind the scenes stuff where you can see how I work here in the bar when I'm making the show. Um, I'm playing tabletop role-playing games with a, a crew of uh, friends of mine. Uh, we're doing cyberpunk right now, which has been a blast. Um, all kinds of just, just fun things happening there live. And if you miss the live stuff, well, that's okay because eventually it winds up on my second channel, H2D2. No, I'm supposed to do that thing. Hey, uh, if you like the show, uh, I hope you will comment, subscribe, like it, all that stuff you're supposed to do. I don't know. I mean, honestly, the only metric that matters is watch time. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. I don't know the words. I don't know the words. I don't know the words to this song and this bit's on too long. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart.